Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, today I'm going to show you something called Lewis Dot Structures. All right, this is our next step. All right, our end goal in all of this is just to understand about how certain atoms will interact with each other and what will they'll do when they interact. Those are called chemical reactions. All right, which has to do really with about what happens to the electrons. And so that's why we've been drawing a lot of four models. I'm sure you guys are getting tired of drawing four models. And there's a lot of circles and a lot of dots, and you're getting arms getting a little tired of drawing them all over and over and over again. But you're not the only one. All right. Scientists kind of felt the same way. All right. And so what I'm going to show you guys here is kind of the next step, um, ideally, to make your life just a little bit easier. All right. But I'm going to point out a couple of mistakes because I'm going to show you guys these Lewis dot structures. I'm going to highlight the mistake that students are going to make. And I'm still going to see it, but I'm calling it out right now. Don't make this mistake. All right. Here we go. So I have four atoms up here. I drew the four models. It took me actually like a good solid five minutes just to draw them. Again, getting kind of tired of drawing four models. I get it. So let's do something about it. All right. Uh, but just recap, I have lithium right here. There's three electrons, two energy levels. Carbon, six electrons, two energy levels. Three energy levels, 16 electrons, and th or three energy levels, and 18 electrons. All right. We talked about in a previous video that the thing that we're really, really focusing on is if we're going to have a carbon and sulfur interact, the things that's going to interact first is the outside part, right? That's what's going to touch first, all right? And so what we start doing is we do the number of valence electrons, right? So even though we have three electrons here, we have only one valence electron. I remember valence electrons, the number of electrons in the outside. So there's my valence electron right there. I have three electrons, but only one of them is called a valence electron. Here we have carbon. It has four valence electrons. Here is sulfur. Oops. Sulfur has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Remember, you can't get to the outer level until you fill the inner levels. So we got the one, two, three, four, five, sorry. Uh, we have three energy levels, but out of those three energy levels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons, which we know that means it's full because that, <clears throat> that third energy level can only hold eight. So it's a full energy level there. All right. Um, so, I want to make our lives easier here. We're going to draw what we call Lewis dot structures. All right, make sure you guys can see that. Lewis dot structures. All right. All I'm going to do is turn each one of these into a Lewis dot structure. If all we really care about at the moment is the number of valence electrons, because those are the ones that are going to interact first. Not that the other electrons aren't important. It's just that these are the ones we're going to be talking about when they're kind of front of the line, on the outside, the outer barrier. All right. Let's simplify this. All right. Lithium has one valence electron. Instead of drawing it every time with all the energy levels, I'm just going to use the symbol Li, that's for lithium, and it has one valence electron, Lewis dot structure. All right. Carbon, that's the letter C. It has six electrons, but only four of them are valence electrons. One, two, three, four. That's it for our loose dot structure, right? The dots on the outside, those are going to be our valence electrons, right? Again, it's that simple. You're like, well, wait, that was that. Wait, there's something else. I'm not. It can't just be that easy. I know how to find the number of valence electrons. It, it can't just be that easy. It is that easy. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it easier. All right. Sulfur. Symbol is S. It has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. Lewis dot Lewis dot structure. Four model, Lewis dot structure. All right. Now I said right. I said a moment ago. You guys are going to make, or a lot of people are going to make a mistake, and it's going to drive me crazy. All right. The mistake is going to be that they're going to try and put all the electrons around it. It is not every electron that goes around a Lewis dot structure. It is the valence electrons. So someone's going to give me this, and I'm going to try and draw 18 dots around this. No. Stop it. No. Not 18 electrons. The Lewis dot structure's purpose is to show for you how many valence electrons there are. Only the outer level, all right? Which means I have 18 electrons, but only eight of them are valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight valence electrons for that argon. That's it. That's how you make Lewis dot structures. Is you literally just take the Bohr model and you take the you put the symbol, the valence electrons, and I recommend spreading them out kind of like how we've been doing. Like that. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Pretty simple, right? At least I hope so. It should be simple. That's the whole idea of it. All right. That's it. That's how you make Lewis dot structures. So now you can make a Bohr model, and then 10 seconds after that, you'll be done with the Lewis dot structure. All right. Uh, that's it. That's kind of a short video. Otherwise, uh, watch again if you didn't quite do it, or put it in your notebook. Don't forget how to do that, or make sure to write that stuff down in your notebook so you can reference it later. I don't expect you to memorize my videos. That's why you write things down. All right. Otherwise, uh, good luck, and may the science be with you. Bye.